The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Oil, present Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Time's getting short. You have only a few more days to enter Kraft Oil's contest, the sensational Name the Cake contest that awards the winner a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. Get entry blanks at your grocer's tomorrow. It's easy to enter. And you may win a new Ford every year for five years or one of 1,850 valuable Dormeyer electric appliances. More details in a few minutes. you never know what to expect when a boy empties his pocket. Sometimes it's pieces of string, marbles, tin foil, keys that won't fit anything, and some things you can't even identify. But this afternoon, when the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, emptied his, there was a roll of electric wire, a dry cell battery, and a cast-off light switch. And for the last couple of hours, he's been pretty busy. Now I'll attach this other wire to the switch and snip it off. That should do it. Leroy! Yeah, Bertie? What are you up to in your uncle's den? What makes you think I'm up to something? Because it's so quiet in here. And I know you ain't doing your homework because you usually have the radio going full blast. You're up to something. Bertie, I got the whole house wired. All I have to do is flip this switch. You gonna blow it up? Nah. I'm going to have some fun with Unc when he comes home. Come again? Why don't you answer the door, Bertie? The doorbell ain't ringing. Oh, yeah? My land. Ah, I, <laughs> I rang the doorbell sitting right here. Boy, if you rang that doorbell sitting here down on the damn floor, you got the longest arms I ever saw. <laughs> well, heck, I can even make the telephone ring. No fooling. Just by flipping the switch. Leroy, where'd you learn all that hocus-pocus? I picked it up at school. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Uh-oh, here's Unc. Make him answer the phone and doorbell when they ring. Okay. I can always give him a job. <laughs> where is everybody? Come in, Miss Gale, please. Don't let him come in here. Oh, you home, ain't you? That's an astute observation, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Where's Leroy? Oh, he's around and about, up and down, here and there, somewhere around. <laughs> well, I'll catch him the next time around. <laughs> yes, sir. Can we have dinner a little early? I have a date with Miss Henshaw tonight. The new school principal? Yeah, little night school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh-oh, I got to go check the rope. <laughs> All right, I'll get the door. That's funny. Nobody out here. Yeah, I know the doorbell rang. Bertie, you heard the doorbell, didn't you? Yes. Oh, that's strange. Oh, well. I wonder what's in the evening paper. You want to answer the telephone, Miss Gillespie? Yeah, all right, Bertie. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Confounded hello. <laughs> eh, nobody there. Guess they hung up. Oh, my goodness. Can you get it? Yes, Bertie. Huh. Wonder if some kid rang the bell and ran. Yeah, I'll bet that was Leroy. Oop, I've got the door open and it still rings. <laughs> What's wrong with these chimes? Must be a short in the wiring. Yeah, better take a look. What's this wire? George, I have to congratulate myself when I think of how well I'm doing with Irene Henshaw. Yeah, glad the school needed a new principal. And she grades me pretty high. <laughs> if I try to hold her hand tonight, I wonder if she'll give me an F in deportment. <laughs> well, at least I'm going to get an A for effort. Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Irene. Come in. Thank you. Well, 
you're right on time. Yep, always make it a point never to be late for school. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get here. Look, I have a couple of apples for the teacher. You brought apples? They're in my cheeks. <laughs> oh, it must be nippy out. Yeah. What shall we do tonight, Irene? Do you mind if we just stay here by the fire? Do I mind? <laughs> I had a dreadful day at school. Everything seemed to go wrong. Yeah, I'll do my best to make you forget. Let's sit here on the couch. Uh-huh. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is much nicer than going out. You bet. Say, you're a vision of loveliness tonight. Thank you. That's quite a get-up you're wearing. Low in the back and buttoned high up the front. Cute dress. It's just a little print. I must say you publish it well. (laughs) Doc Morton, you're such fun to be with. You bolster my ego. Well, we do get along great together. He's such a comfortable man to be around. Yeah, I'm as comfortable as an old shoe. <laughs> I wonder if I should throw another log in the fire. No, no, let it flicker. I love the interesting shadows it throws on the wall. Yeah, I can see our shadows over there. Let's see if I can make a rabbit with my hands. He used to do this when I was a kid. Well, that's very good. I'll make a companion for him. Good. <laughs> How's that? He's quite a bunny. Let's have our rabbits touch noses. All right. <laughs> yeah, look, they like each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Irene. Yes? They say the Eskimos rub noses when they kiss. So I've heard. I wonder if we should forget the rabbits and play Eskimo. <laughs> Do you think it's that cold in here? No, indeed. <laughs> Irene. Oop. Who could be at the door at this hour? Probably a Northwest Mountie. Excuse me, Throckmorton. What a time for the doorbell to ring. Evening, Miss Henshaw. Why, Mr. Jensen. You told me a report what I found out about them dad busted bells at school. Yes. Well, I can't find out a thing. Oh? Well, why did he come by? Except the inside. We'll have to decide what to do. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gillisley, this is our school custodian, Mr. Jensen. Hello, Mr. Jensen. Well, how are you, Mr. Gillisley? <laughs> I didn't know our war commissioner was keeping company with our school principal. <laughs> well, <laughs> pretty hard man to keep up with where the women are concerned. <laughs> Jensen. Uh, uh, why, why can't you fix the bells at school, Mr. Jensen? Well, I can't seem to find out where them boys cost the wire. You say some boys have been monkeying with the bell system at school? That's why it was such a difficult day. We had bells ringing at all hours. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh, that Leroy. A class would just get settled, the bells would ring, and they'd get up and leave. Yes, sir. We had a regular traffic jam this afternoon with all them bells ringing at once. <laughs> Sounded like a fire drill. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't any idea what boy did it? No, but I'd be tempted to expel the one who did. I'd warm his britches, that's what. Well, maybe he didn't realize what he was doing. Who? Well, whoever did it. I know this. I can't go through another day like today. No, Irene. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. First thing in the morning, I'm going to call a special assembly, and somebody is going to account to me. She means... I'll point out how everybody in school is being inconvenienced, and if the boy has any honor at all, he'll step forward and take his medicine. Well, I'm sure Leroy... Oh! <laughs> Leroy? Leroy, you're any boy. Whoever did it. We'll realize his mistake by tomorrow morning. Any boy who would do a thing like this must be a headache to his parents. Well, um, I'd better say good night. Yeah, I better go home, too. I think I have a headache. Yeah, there's still a light in Leroy's room. Yeah, I'll go up and read the riot act to that boy. Oop! Bells again. He's got everything wired. That young man's going to be in for a shock himself. I never saw Irene so upset. That's another thing. He broke up my date. Leroy. Yeah? Front and center. What? Out of bed, young man. On your feet and give me an accounting. Oh, you mean our door 
doorbell. I forgot to disconnect my wires. Leroy, they're not the only wires you've been tampering with. What are you talking about, Unc? Yeah, I know all about what you did to the school bells. All that? Well, I had nothing to do with it. But, boy, you should have seen Miss Henshaw. Was she in a tizzy? And you should have seen Mr. Jensen. I've seen Mr. Jensen. Yeah? Did he get the bells fixed? They're waiting for you to tell them where you crossed the wires. Now come clean. I am clean. I don't have anything to tell them. Oh, Leroy, the finger's pointing at you. Look, I didn't do it, honest. Well, then how do you happen to know so much about rigging bells? Oh, heck, I just picked it up. Well, you picked up a hot potato. Tomorrow morning, you're going to march up to Miss Henshaw and confess. I am not. Leroy, careful. Why should I confess? Because it builds character. Now go to bed and think it over. But I'm innocent. And stop insisting you're innocent when I keep telling you you're guilty. What a character. Pretty quiet around school today. Irene must have laid down the law. That Leroy. Couldn't get a thing out of him. The only honest thing for me to do is go to Irene myself and tell her I know he's implicated. Maybe she'll go to Levy on the boy. He isn't malicious. Come in. Hello, Irene. Hello, Throckmorton. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Irene. Oh, yes, we are in school, aren't we? Yes, we are. The reason I came, Miss Henshaw, is to talk about the bells. Oh, they became such a problem, we disconnected them all. We're going by watches until we find the source of the trouble. Well, I know the source of the trouble. You do? This is very embarrassing and painful to me. But the boy who did it is afraid to confess himself, so I'm doing it for him. Who are you talking about, Throckmorton? Well, my nephew, Leroy. Leroy? Is he smart enough to rig the wires? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I didn't know he was scientifically inclined. Yeah, now, don't be too hard on him. It may be that he's just gotten in with the wrong crowd here in the school. I didn't know we had a wrong crowd in our school. Well, the principal doesn't always know what's going on. Oh? Boy can pick up plenty of mischief in a school like this and bring the ideas right home. Uh-huh. Mr. Gildersleeve, it has been my experience that if a boy has received the proper training at home, he isn't likely to get into much mischief at school. No, Irene, let's not criticize the way I bring up Leroy. Well, let's not criticize the way I run this school. But I feel I know you well enough to tell you the boy got his wires crossed here in your school. I think I know you well enough to tell you the boy's uncle is a little haywire. No, I read. I'm very busy. Good day. Well, if that's the way you want it, good day. Confound it. Only trying to get Leroy straightened out. Lend a helping hand and she steps on it. Say, there's Jensen still working on the wire. You found out where the trouble is, Jensen? Not yet, Commissioner. Well, perhaps I should help. I feel a little responsible for this. Did you do the tinkering? No, Jensen. Here, let me have your pliers. I see a wire way back there that looks like it's dangling. Oh, must have missed that one. Here. Here, it goes right here, I guess. Oh, Dad, bust it. Now the kids will change classes again. (laughs) Yeah, here comes Miss Henshaw breathing fire. I'm getting out of here. She's already scorched me. Greg Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Listen carefully if you'd like a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. Tonight's the last time we're broadcasting details of how to enter Kraft Oil's sensational Name the Cake contest. Tomorrow, get a green-capped bottle of Kraft Oil at your grocer's. You'll find the recipe for the cake that needs a name printed inside the label. And also, be sure to get the official entry blank that gives easy contest rules. Just bake the cake, enjoy it, and decide on a name that describes it. The name you send to Kraft Oil may win a brand new Ford every year for five years. 
you get a deluxe Ford Victoria the first year and then trade it in without further cost to you on the newest model every year for the next four years. Additional prizes include Dormeyer electric broiler rotisseries, Dormeyer electric blankets, Dormeyer power mixers, Dormeyer portable mixers, and Dormeyer firewells. Altogether, 1,851 prizes. You'll find the complete list on the entry blanks at your grocer's and also news about a special bonus prize. But hurry! Your Name the Cake contest entry must be mailed to Kraft Oil within 10 days. Get your entry off right away. You may be the winner of a new Ford Victoria every year for five years or one of the valuable Dormeyer electric appliances. Gildersleeve has plenty of circumstantial evidence, but he hasn't been able to get a confession that his nephew, Leroy, rigged the school bell. Now the water commissioner feels that the boy's character development is at the crossroad. Bertie, you know I never get tough with Leroy because of a little prank. But when he won't make a clean breast of it, that's another matter. Yes, sir, but did anybody see him do it? Well... Teacher didn't see him do it. No, but... The principal didn't see him do it. True, but... Did you see him do it? Of course not. But we know he rigged the bells here at home. That I saw him do. Yeah, you see? And it happened the same day. What do you say to that? <laughs> I'd say just like his uncle. <laughs> what? Mr. Gillespie, when you was in college, who put the cow in the dean's office? <laughs> well, that was an amusing prank. Yes, sir. But did the dean think so? <laughs> yeah. I don't want Leroy doing everything I did. But when he does get out of line, by George, I want him to admit it. Here he comes. Maybe he'll take this more seriously if I give him the cold shoulder. I'll let him know I'm so shocked I don't want to have anything to do with him. Hi, Unc. Hello? They got the bells fixed at school. Well, I hope you enjoyed your fun. All the kids did. And I suppose the culprit never admitted it. Nuh-uh. Mm-hmm. I wonder who did it. Ah. I did not. Hey, let's forget it. I can go to a movie tonight. That'd be a slow way to forget it. I don't think I care to attend the movie with you, Leroy. Even if I pay my own way? <laughs> Sorry? What's the matter with you, Unc? Something's happened between us, my boy. The old spark is gone. I like young men of character. I'm loaded with it. <laughs> I just don't flaunt it. Yeah. Well, if you don't want to go to a movie with me, let's eat and I'll go with Piggy. I don't think I even care to have dinner with you. You don't? I'll eat now and you can eat later. Why don't I eat now and you eat later? <laughs> Why should you have first crack at it? What a callous boy. What can I do for you? No, I don't want anything. Just wanted to get out of the house and away from Leroy. And the boy got the mumps or something? No, I'm purposely ignoring him because he wired those school bells and won't admit it. He's on tape. I'm giving him something to think about. What are you doing, Phoebe? Well, I'm just putting these cosmetics on the shelves. You know, a woman uses a lot of camouflage these days, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I guess so. They may not put much on their backs, but they still put a lot on their faces. <laughs> I wonder what a woman really looks like. <laughs> you should know, Phoebe, you're married. Yeah, I think I'll take some of this stuff home to Mrs. Peary. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I have a new line of perfume here. Anytime you need a gift for the new school principal. Well, we aren't getting along right now. You don't think? That's Leroy's fault, too. I tried to explain the situation to her, and we had a row. Well, if you and Miss Henshaw had a row, you might want to skedaddle out the back way. Do I? Here she comes. Who? Hello, Mr. TV. Mm, good evening, Miss Henshaw. Rock Morton, I'm so glad to see you. You are? We found out who caused all the bell ringing in school. Leroy's fingerprints? 
<laughs> no, no. Leroy had nothing to do with it. He didn't? Some of the older boys were indulging in a pre-Halloween prank. They were? Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, explains why Leroy wouldn't admit he did it, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, he'd rigged all the bells at home except the burglar alarm. I'm afraid you owe Leroy an apology, Throckmorton. Yeah, I'll say I do. I jumped to conclusions. I assumed too much. Yes, you did. I really wronged the boy. I was short-sighted, unfair, suspicious... Stupid. <laughs> All right, Phoebe. I'm just helping you out. I owe you an apology, too, Throckmorton, getting upset with you. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry for what I said, too. Maybe we should go somewhere and be sorry together. How about tomorrow evening? Tomorrow evening? If you want some place to go and have a Sunday, I'd be glad to whip up a masterpiece to top off your evening. Phoebe, when I entertain a girl, a Sunday would hardly be the highlight of the evening. <laughs> well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey's going to be mighty sorry he accused you, Leroy. Yeah. I can't wait for him to come home. What a break for me. Boy, what are you up to now? Well, they say you should pay for your mistakes. And I'm going to pay. Leroy! Uh-oh, I'm going to leave the field to you. Leroy! Oh, there you are, my boy. Hello? <laughs> they found out who fouled up the bells at school. Yeah. Leroy, I'm sorry. I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my boy, suppose we go to that movie you were talking about. I don't think I want to attend a movie with you. Oh, come on. We'll eat dinner and be off for an evening together. I don't think I care to have dinner with you. But, Leroy... Sorry, Unc, but something has happened between us. Like you said, the spark is gone. Now, Leroy, I made a mistake. You sure did. But I want to make it up to you. It's too late, Unc. You've stifled my genius. What? Just when it was starting to burn. What genius? My electrical genius. I might have been another Thomas Edison or an Alexander Graham Bell. That is, if I had better equipment. Better equipment? There's a kit down at Hogan Brothers with switches, wire, batteries, transformers. I could take that and invent anything. Oh? But I guess if you ever caught me doing something practical, like specializing in electricity, I'd get the treatment again. My boy, I want you to have that outfit. No. Leroy, please. I owe it to you. Say you'll accept it. Well... Okay, Unc, if it'll make you happy. You don't mind staying out a little later tonight, do you, Irene? Not at all, Throckmorton. It's been fun. Yeah, I thought it'd be nice to stop by the house and have some birdies cake and hot chocolate. You come in. It's us, Bertie. Yes! Oh, Bertie has a nice fire going. Yes. Let's go over and sit down. Here comes an hot start, Miss McKay. Well, such service. Bertie's a jewel. Evening, Miss Angel. Hello, Bertie. Now I'll put the tray right down here by you two and leave you to shift for yourself. All right, Bertie. We'll manage. Thank you. Good night. Yes, sir. How do you like to look that cake, Miss Angel? Oh, it's beautiful, Bertie. I've been hearing a lot about your cake. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, Bertie's quite a cook. Good night, Bertie. Good night, Miss Gilsey. That recipe for this cake won the first prize at the county fair, Miss Henshaw. Oh, really? Uh, do you cook, Miss Henshaw? Oh, my goodness. Not very much, I'm afraid. <laughs> I know you're the school principal, but principals ought to know how to cook. They get mad, too. Yes, well, I'm afraid my interest lies more in the sciences, physics, astronomy. Well, you and Mr. Gilsleeve could study astronomy together. He likes 
likes the moon, too. <laughs> Ready. Of course, the moon's fine when you're courting, but after you're mad, there's nothing like knowing how to make a hot biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. Uh, Bertie. I'm going. <laughs> Good night, Bertie. Uh, at last. Why, George, we have quite a time trying to be alone together. Yes. Yeah. The last time, it was the school custodian, wasn't it? Yeah, about those school bells. Yeah, I made it up to Leroy, though. Got him the finest electrical outfit Hogan Brothers had. Good. Yeah, I got him on the right track. He's doing constructive things with it. He even fixed this lamp. Oh. Yes, indeed. A very complicated three-way switch. See, it's on bright now. It is a little bright, isn't it? Yeah. Good look. No, it's dim. Ah, uh, that is better. I can even make it dimmer. <laughs> oh, it's wide to the burglar alarm! Leroy! The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Just a last reminder to get your entry blank for Kraft Oil's sensational Name the Cake contest at your grocer's tomorrow. It's the easiest contest in the world to enter. Just send in a name for the wonderful new cake made with lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. First prize is a new Ford Victoria every year for five years. Other prizes include 1,850 Dormeyer electric appliances. Just name the cake that's made with Kraft Oil. Get your entry blank tomorrow, and good luck! I put the electric kit right there in the car, Uncle, like you said. Yeah, all right, Leroy. I'm sorry it has to be this way, but I'm returning it to Hogan Brothers. Uncle, I'm sorry about the burglar alarm last night. But can I keep the kid if I... Leroy, I don't want to discuss it. I'm late for a meeting with the mayor. Oh, for just when I'm in a hurry. I might be able to fix it, Unc. You? Well, I've been studying electricity, you know. Maybe it's the wire. Leroy, put down the hood. Yeah, yeah, this could be the trouble. Oh, uh, hand me the kid, Unc. Well... Better than paying a mechanic, I guess. Unless he ruins the motor. Yeah, that, that might do it. Now step on the starter. Well. Say, it started. Yeah, let me close the hood. And here's the kit you want to return. Uh, Leroy, maybe you'd better keep it. Yeah? The car might be hard to start again some morning. Gosh, thanks, huh? Goodbye, my boy. It's a good thing I pulled that wire loose. I really would have lost this kit. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Jess Kirkpatrick, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into your favorite sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Play you
Bet Your Life with Groucho next on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs> 